let us please welcome our student speaker, Ms. Bea Alexa Rondon, with a warm round of applause. Be Bea, a senior here at BISM, is not only an aspiring artist, excellent student, but probably the best personality out there, but also my personal idol and hero. She is the Executive Council Vice President, my senior ed chair in Model United Nations, as well as one of our forensics public speakers. Today, she'll be sharing with us, diving into the heart of creativity. Screaming, but they can't hear me. You can hear me now? Okay, thank you. So sorry for that. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm currently a high school senior, and I just finished my culminating exhibit for IB Visual Arts. When I saw all of the art that I've made in the past two years up on a wall together for the first time, I couldn't help but think about how I'd gotten to this point how long it had taken, and why I wanted to dedicate my life to the arts in the first place. I've probably been drawing ever since I could hold a pencil. And whenever I'd show these drawings to my family and friends, they'd compliment me, telling me that I was so talented, I should become an artist when I grow up. And I think after all those years, because of the overwhelming support that they'd given me, I finally thought, hey, why don't I make a career out of this? Thus, I practiced my craft whenever I had the time to, and what was once just a hobby became my passion. Art became my lifestyle. Nearing the end of my high school life, when I was asked what major I want to take up in college, I didn't have to blink twice to know that my answer was animation. Yet, when I told others about this, I didn't quite get that same validation that I had when I was younger. My former guidance counselor, for example, asked me why I would waste my 4.0 GPA when I could become a doctor or lawyer instead. I've had some classmates ask me if I was sure I wanted to become an artist because they didn't see me as lazy or incompetent. Why is it that these same people who used to support my creative pursuit now questioned the value of my passion and my investment in it? How come when we hear the word artist, we all immediately picture this laid-back character who just can't seem to excel in their academics. I mean, scientific innovation. Art has value that's worth celebrating, and that's what I want to tell you today. Yet, there's this impending pressure put on me to rethink my passion. And this may be fueled by that stereotype that claims East Asians see art as a hindrance to our intellectual development and is not a career worth pursuing. But have you ever wondered why such a stereotype exists? Why people perceived traditionalist East Asian parents to favor high grades over creativity or money over meaning? Because nowhere in the roots of our beliefs does it say that we value monetary success or high rankings over creativity self-expression, or creative pursuit. When Confucius said that the family is the center and comes before the individual, he meant this as a reminder to children to fulfill the responsibilities of taking care of their families when they grow up and not just prioritize themselves. He didn't mean this to guilt trip the youth into giving up their dreams. The traditionalist Philippine mindset of encouraging work in higher paying jobs was meant to ensure that we can afford the best opportunities for our children and not devalue our career choices unless our families can leech off our work at a discount. I've always wondered why the celebration of art has been devalued throughout the course of my childhood. Art is embedded in all of our cultures, Asian or not, and to deny that art has value would be to deny our culture. 
because if we're all so proud to celebrate our heritages, why can't we celebrate art in this way too? What exactly is it that changed our minds on what defines the value of artists and visual arts as a whole? As an Asian who will be continuing her creative pursuit in America, it's important for me, and I'm sure for all of you, to know that the first step in combating the global decrease in art involvement and appreciation is by not fueling these misconceptions that were born by twisting our cultures. I want to show all of you the beauty of art because it's worth celebrating all over the world. But unfortunately, not everyone would agree with me. Many public high school students in America may soon not have the opportunity to even study the arts. And this is because of the devaluing of their creative arts programs. And these programs are the first at risk of getting cut when schools are faced with budget deficits. Here are some claims in favor of this. One, students are more likely to use what they've learned in core classes once they graduate. Two, most colleges don't require art expertise or art skill to get accepted. And three, the most bizarre to me, students, if required to take art classes, may struggle in catching up to their curriculum, especially if they're failing in their core classes. You could argue that beyond teaching aesthetics, the only value that creative arts programs have to students is helping them develop their creativity. And then you'd also argue that students can develop their creativity in any class they take. But I beg to differ, because creativity is a skill that cannot and should not demand academic assessment. The nature of most classroom subjects just can't facilitate innovation or imagination in the way that the arts can. Here's a thought. Maybe students wouldn't be struggling in their core classes if we didn't confine such a diverse set of young minds to rubrics. I mean, who has the right to define what profound skill means anyways? When discussing the value of creative arts programs for students, we aren't saying that the arts are the most important subject of them all, or that students should solely focus on the arts. Because as much as I am an art enthusiast, I'll admit that arts education cannot take place in isolation, as with any other subject. The visual arts go beyond just teaching you what colors or shapes look pretty together. They teach you what emotions you can evoke by using specific hues or what stories you can tell from certain imagery. Without such context of the world, we wouldn't have information to draw inspiration for our art from or know how to effectively communicate our ideas in engaging and attention-grabbing ways. Thus, involvement in the arts in high school can help students enhance their education in other subjects as well as beyond the classroom. Don't believe me? Well, the National Endowment for the Arts actually has statistics to prove this. A study they conducted in 2012 focused on the potential benefits of art engagement among American youth in the lowest socioeconomic quarter. Among their findings were these three benefits. One, students with high in-depth art involvement we're more likely to have better grades and have higher college acceptances. As seen in this graph, where pink is rep represents students with high arts involvement and blue represents students with low arts involvement, you can see that the students who are more engaged in the arts had a higher likelihood of completing high school courses, were more likely to plan to earn a bachelor's degree, enrolled in a selected four-year college, and actually earned these bachelor degrees. Two, there was a big difference in career aspirations between those with high arts involvement in school as well as those with little to no arts involvement in school. This graph shows that students with higher arts involvement were more likely to choose a major that aligns with a professional career. Professional career including, but not limited, to those flashed on the screen. And these students engaged in the arts more were not only more likely to want to pursue a professional career, but they were actually more likely to actually work in these careers. Three, young adults with a history of high arts involvement in school were more likely to show high levels of voting, 
volunteering, engagement in school and local politics, as well as concern for what's going around them, such as by reading news sources. In fact, a recent study done by 15 researchers at Michigan State University focused, compared on the arts engagement of every single Nobel Prize winner from 1901 to 2005 relative to the arts engagement of your average scientist. And what separated these two groups was that the Nobel Prize winners were a whopping seven times more likely to be engaged in some form of art than their less accomplished peers. You could conclude from their data that these scientists were able to excel more in their respective fields because of their exposure to art. They also conducted this same study on highly successful entrepreneurs and inventors relative to their average counterparts. All of these studies prove that those in various non-arts related fields were able to show more creativity, curiosity, and aptitude because of their exposure to art. Art clearly has symbiosis with all of these fields you may have otherwise thought can't benefit from the arts or are completely unrelated to the arts. Most of us overlook the benefits that art can have on us as individuals and our societies as a whole. Constantly engaging yourself in art can help you enhance a wide variety of cognitive processes, such as your perception and communication skills. Art can teach you how to deconstruct a big picture through interpretation with context without getting overwhelmed by all the small details. This skill can definitely help in interpreting a painting but it can also help in analyzing literary text, employees to manage, a crime scene, and so much more. This includes the ability to articulate what is present and what is absent in a situation, a skill necessary for diagnosing patients and relaying the results of scientific experiments, where what is not observed is just as important as what is observed. Art can also teach you how to construct grand ideas step by step with careful thought and patience, all while foreseeing what message you want to convey or what goal you want to reach, how you will achieve this, and what impact your knowledge can have on your intended audience. The more you expose yourself to art, the more you'll be able to ask effective questions to better adapt to real world situations by looking at them from a different perspective, by taking a step back to see the bigger picture, while at the same time paying closer attention to all the intricate details that make it up. This is why schools should continue to support their arts programs and why we should take advantage of being involved in them, so that the youth can develop skills like these, which they can use in their daily lives, no matter what career path they want to take. While my passion for art may have been clouded by my necessity to survive, there are so many reasons why people like me won't ever stop standing by art or ever stop celebrating the wonders that it has to offer. And I hope I've given you at least just a glimpse of why. If we could teach the youth to understand creativity, they'll learn how to recognize that thinking outside the box, that being creative is a skill and that if you aren't born with creativity, that doesn't mean that you can't be born, that doesn't mean that you can't be creative. Because creativity is something you can develop. It's something that you can make for yourself with hard work, dedication, and encouraging support from your peers. Thus, it is only with the awareness of the benefits that art can have on ourselves and to our communities that we can tr truly appreciate art as the heart of authentic creative expression. Of course, it is important for us to teach the youth to see importance in the art just as much as they should see importance in all the other fields just to help our diverse society to thrive. But if we could all just stop fixating on excellence defined by numbers and instead aim to fuel creativity, we could all become so much more prepared and inspired to push forward in a world overflowing with potential for innovation. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk.
Thank you so much, Bea. As a fellow artist and student, I am truly moved and inspired by you. I'm sure like many of the students who are now in our audience. Now, due to the fact that Ms. Rondon, who has despite her busy schedule with the IB mock exams, made time to join us today to share with her, to share with us her graces, we'll have to leave right away in a few minutes to catch her next exam. She will not be making it to our awarding ceremony at the end of the event, so I will be giving her her certificate and small gifts of gratitude right now. Thank you so much, Bea, for joining us today. Thank you, Bea. Are we closer here? Are we closer here? I have to take my pictures now because I'm leaving soon. Are you done, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Bea.